The Fat Controller has reopened a branch line. It runs along the coast by sandy beaches and seaside towns till it meets the small railway at a port to which big ships come. As Duck had made friends with the small railway engines, the Pat Controller asked him to take charge. Your work in the yard has been good, he said kindly. Would you like to have this branch line for your own? Yes, please, sir, said Duck. Very well, said the Pat Controller. I hope you will work hard and be a credit to me. Duck is very proud of his branch line, and he works very hard. His two coaches, Alice and Mirabelle, are painted in great western colours. They take passengers to the small railway. Duck also has some trucks, in which he hauls away the ballast that the small engines bring down from their valley. The fat controller uses this ballast for his railway. Duck can't do all the work himself, so Donald and Douglas take turns to help him. The Fat Controller has built them a shed at the station by the small railway. Duck felt his responsibility deeply. He talked endlessly about it. You don't understand, Donald, how much the Fat Controller relies on me. Okay, muttered Donald sleepily. I'm Great Western and... Quack, quack, quack. What? You heard. Quack, quack, you go. Saying you'd an egg laid. Now whisht and let an engine sleep. Quack yourself, said Duck indignantly. He stayed awake wondering how to pay Donald out. At last he said to himself sleepily, I'll ask Driver in the morning. He says I quack as if I'd laid an egg. Let's pay him out. Quack, do you? Miss Farman pondered. I know, he said, and whispered. Duck giggled, and his driver slapped his leg in delight. Just right, he said. He dearly loved a joke. That night, when Donald was asleep, they popped something into his water tank. We've done it, they whispered to Duck. I won't hurt her, will I? asked Duck anxiously. Bless you, no. They're both kind men. She'll come to no harm. first water stop. Both driver and farmer goggled with surprise, but Donald laughed. They do to door who's behind this, he said, and told them what had happened in the shed. The duckling was tame. She shared the driver's and farmer's sandwiches and rode in the tender, quacking at intervals. The other engines enjoyed teasing Donald about her. Presently, however, she hopped off at the station, and as they couldn't wait to catch her, there she stayed. But before they reached home, Donald and his driver and farmer consulted together and made a plan. That night, Donald's driver and farmer got busy. When Duck's crew arrived to look him over in the morning, they found something which made them laugh till they cried. Look, Duck, they said. Look what was under your bunker. A nest box with an egg in it. Duck peered at it unbelievingly. Donald opened a sleepy eye. You dinner say, he exclaimed. Do you mind what I said, Duck? You must have laid it this night, all unbeknownst. Then Duck laughed too. You win, Donald, he said. It'll take a clever engine to get the better of you. The duckling settled at the station and became a pet with passengers and staff. She carefully inspects all parcels and luggage and sees that the porters stow them properly in the vans. When she wants to swim, she flies to a nearby pond, but always returns to welcome the trains. She stands by the cab, quacking imperiously, till driver or farming gives her something to eat. Donald is her favourite, and she sometimes allows him to give her rides, but always gets off in her own station. The station master calls her Dilly, but to everyone else, she is always Donald's duck.